All right, folks, so I know it's April 1st, and I know there's all these April Fool's jokes going on, or maybe not, maybe people have gotten tired of it. But for us Pokemon fans, especially in the competitive scene in Smogon, we know that the first of the month means that we've got tier updates, particularly uh, at least at the beginning of the generation. I mean, we're not at the beginning, but we're still at the point where we can still get monthly updates. So it seems like there's been several uh, rises and drops. So I was in the middle of doing all my box change. And I was like, you know what? I can uh, show this off to everyone to give you a better visualization. So first of all, I'm looking at the tier changes and it looks like we got Slow King over here that I just moved. Uh, this is gonna be Samurott spot once I have finished breeding it. But Slow King just got moved into OU from UU. And the best way I can only think about this is maybe uh, this guy right here. <laughs> you need a nice uh, spadef switch in to be able to switch in. But you've also got access to Chili Reception's Trick Room. It's the only one that, that gets it, so that's the best way to do it in my opinion. Or at least that I've been seeing. Maybe there's other ways, but that's what I've been trying to do. So who could take advantage of that in this tier? Maybe Azumarill could come in. Oh, Armor Rouge, hello. That would be a little bit difficult to set up with expanding force and err with the um, You might be better off just using Indeedy who's still in UU I think but um I don't know if anyone else in this tier can really take advantage of it. Maybe Hatterene but it's going to set up its own trick room anyway Or maybe not, I don't know Either way let's not dwell too much on that We've also got a lot of drops from OU so obviously Decidueye was not going to stick around in OU for that long and no surprise, we got Iron Leaves over here that just dropped down. Um, but then Pelipper, Rain is back on the menu in UU. So we got Dreadnought right here that's ready to go. I've been trying to use it with um, Grafii over here with the Rain Dance set. Didn't really work out too well for me, but that, that was all because of a Mimic. Otherwise, it would have swept. So now I can easily use this and just sweep. So Dreadnought. If Pelipper sticks around, which who knows if it will, it keeps going up and down. Uh, Dreadnought could easily go up to UU. And uh, then of course we got another star, Quaquival, who can also take advantage of the rain. So really getting the starting to build up a rain team here. You can use Pelipper, Dreadnought, I'm pretty sure that you got, oh yeah, you got Barrascuta, you got Floatzel. So lots of potential for rain in UU at the moment. And uh, yeah. So then we've also got a rise from RUPL to you. That's what I was working on putting in place. So we got Haxorus over here. So I just gotta move it a little bit more. Hippowdon, Halucha, which comes first? Oh, Haxorus. So Haxorus goes right here. Um, great Pokemon. I mean, you can Dragon Dance up, get the Terra Fairy off versus a Dragon. Another Dragon type like Salamence. Um, and yeah, I can easily see why I would do great in the tier. It's not like an OU where you're facing off against much higher speed tiers where Axorus might not do as well. And of course, Mold Breaker. You gotta love the Mold Breaker for guess who? This guy right here. Frickin' Mimikyu disguising itself. So I think between that and everything else, that's probably why Axorus moved up to UU. Then we've got a couple of drops. So UU to RU. So this guy right here. Oh, I just used him in a UU battle. No wonder he didn't, he didn't even come out. So I can see why it's not doing it. Indeedy, oh snap, Indeedy just dropped off. And folks, I'm looking at the presses here. Is this correct that the nice and powerful Lycanroc Stab, Lycanroc Tough Claws Accelerock is moving down, or Terrastal Rock is moving down to RU. This is crazy. I guess it wasn't doing everything it could do in uh, you. I'm not sure why this thing wouldn't want to stick around. But I'm going to have to try to make room for all this stuff, so... Uh, I might have to cut some of this out. This might be a lot more editing than But maybe, maybe while I'm moving, I can talk about it. So, Brute Bonnet. There's no sun to take advantage of for its protosynthesis in this tier. It's not going to do all that great in the OU tier. Uh, either way. So, Grass Dark is four times weak to Bug. I'm not sure how many Bug types in particular there are in this tier, but maybe lots of U-turns. Oh, this guy right here, no wonder. He couldn't stick around. Lokix is everywhere. I'll tell you what, the amount of times I've seen Lokix in OU and you. So no wonder this thing had to go. And then we've got Indeedee over here. 
Um, that makes sense. There's, it's just not doing a whole lot in this tier, but this is great because now you can use it in more tiers because it's just kind of difficult to use psychic terrain and everything, which is surprising because I was hearing about all this stuff about armors going up to OU and everything, so I would have thought it would have stuck around. All right, guys, so I'm going to go through and just bring up all the RU mons that moved up to OU. I don't know why it took me uh, so long to think about it. I just had to make space for them. So Rotom Heat and Alola Mola, what are these guys doing? I know Rotom Heat is very good. And both of the Tauros is not surprising, not surprising. After all the work I put in with Choice Scarf and this guy um, being defensive, and you can run either of them Choice Scarf too. So this might be a little bit too much, or I'm, I can move stuff around. So first off, Alola Mola. Great, that's gonna have to go all the way up there. Maybe we can make a little bit of space for it by, um, putting some of these other guys there first. So who goes first? We got Rotom, R and T. So Tinkaton versus Tauros versus Talonflame. All right, yeah, they're gonna go next. So put each of these guys here. I guess water goes before, after fire, I mean, sorry. Put you there, you there, and then S. And then this is a Slitherwing, another S, Screamtail, Scizor, all these S names. Q, R, S. Okay, cool. So Rotom goes there. And then we gotta start moving. Ooh, how am I gonna do this now? So let's think about how these things could have moved up. So Alola Mola, very bulky water type. I'm guessing they could have dealt with the Tauros mods. Uh, probably also switches in pretty well to low kicks. Also Gyarados and things like just an overall bulky regenerator mod in general. I don't know if that's necessarily the best move set for it. I just kind of put on a bunch of cool moves I thought it would thought it could use. And then, like I said, the other Toro Swarms, you can run Choice Scarf, Choice Band, so many you can run defensive, so many options. Um I finally got an A back up here, because Bisharp was first. And let's see what else we are working with here. So, did we make room finally for those others in RU, hopefully? Um, yeah, I moved up four Pokemon, so there should be plenty. So, Brute Bonnet. I don't know why Lycanroc would have moved down. I guess the prevalence of Sizz... Oh, duh, because Scizor moved into you, so that's why that one had to move down. And Indeedy, like I said, just doesn't do a whole lot particularly. So let's think about how alphabetically these things are going to go. So Brute Bonnet's obviously going to be first. Just have to figure out. Um, Belly Bolt is still first. Blissey still goes. Um, oh, okay, yeah, right there. Brute Bonnet. So we've got RU to you taking care of. RU to NU. So who dropped off? So Barrascuta. So kind of crazy I guess in the face of ha having to deal with floats oh wait but floats and move down to okay well this is all about to change I think I feel like these guys are gonna go up to you I guess they couldn't do as well in RU so they're like why use them but now you can use them and use so they're gonna spring back up it's crazy how that works out floor just yeah just not doing a whole lot here Where, where's the dragon types that you're having to deal with like I don't see any dragon types. Why would you use Florges when you can use Sylveon? So that's pretty obvious. I guess there's Tatsugiri, but like I said, you have a Sylveon. And then Charizard. How unfortunate. Charizard finally being relegated down in you. I feel like that's where it was last time. It might have even PU. So, gonna have to just move everybody to the side real quick. So, Barrascuta goes right there move all these guys up pretty easily and then Charizard goes just after Chansey I believe perfect and then Florges we're gonna have to make some room here Floatzel definitely goes first and then Florges right oh crap no I can just perfect I put you right there I don't know why you didn't stay there and then Florges and then Frostmoth perfect so, I already discussed how they would move up into Titan 2. 
and you'd already, oh stop, we got more rises, that's why. So Obama Snow got moved up, so that's why the Titan got moved up. And then Copperage, that makes sense, it's a good stealth rocker, sheer force and everything. Um, probably also has to deal with, um, let's see, you got this guy, you got this guy to deal with. Is there any other? That's all. You, you. Um, I guess yeah, you got psychic and fairy types to deal with a lot too. So the rise of Sylveon and everything. Gonna want this guy. And then we got Frost last. That's right. This thing moved up. It's pretty darn good if you can use it. So all the looks like Ru's kind of becoming a snow tier, huh? You've got all the snow. So each tier kind of has its own weather at this point. OU is going to be dominated by Sun with Walking Wake and Torkoal. UU is going to be dominated by Rain. Even though the Rain Mons aren't all here, you have Pelipper, and you have Quackable, and then you've got Dreadnought, and you've got the other two ones that have moved down to NU but are going to quickly go up to UU. So that's nice. Um... I hope I haven't messed myself up too bad here. No, we're good. We can move them down a little bit. Right, that's all the ones. Oh no, Whiskash. I haven't even bred a Whiskash yet, so I won't have to have it there, thankfully. What's Whiskash doing in RU? That's what I want to know. Because I got no clue at this point. I might have to take out one of the duplicate rev rooms at this point, but I don't have to do it right now. And there might be more room later. Cross moth, so you're gonna go right there, buddy. Er, because you move right there. Move these guys up. Paparaja, a bomb of snow. Coal, also. Copperaja. And then Obama Snow is pretty darn early. Like the more I think about it, whenever I sort things by alphabetical, Obama Snow is probably one of the first. All right, perfect. Right there. Look at how neat that is. Obama Snow A right at the top, and then bada bing, bada boom. This is why I like organizing my boxes. Like I said, I gotta put Whiskash in, we'll worry about that later. And we're getting to the point where a lot of these mons I haven't bred yet. But Basculin I have, right? Where's Basculin at? So now we're going from NU to PU, so some more drops here. So Basculin, just not cutting it, bud. In this NU tier, I'm afraid to say. You got Clauncher here, you got Bruxish that just do the job a little bit better. Um. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. I guess it's adaptab adaptability isn't quite as good with Terra, but I mean, you can use adaptability and it's into another Terra Mon. And you would have thought it would have been doing better, but I guess not. And then Masquerain down to PU, so you can use uh, Sticky Web and PU now too. I guess as I've shown in some of my battles, which I, this is all my PU Mons at this point, kind of crazy. All right, so Masquerade's going there. Like I said, I need to breed a lot more PU. And then Vespaquin, I haven't even bred that yet, but there's no question why. I mean, it's four times week two rock. Though this is kind of coming at a bad time because I just bred Lorantis and I gave it a rock type Terra type specifically just for these two and Vesp Vespaquin just so I could hit them. But I think rock type is still good for any like flying types and to be able to resist fire and stuff like that. And then what else have we got? So, Oricorio, the fire type, one that I have not bred yet, but I will soon, joins its brethren in the NU tier. This guy is NUBL currently, right? Yeah, because this is RU, this is NUBL, this is NU. So, right now it goes, this guy's RU, this one's NUBL, the fire type one is NU, and the psychic type one is NUBL, makes sense. Or PUBL, sorry. And then the last one, we got Rotom Frost, and oh, what's this? Rotom Frost and 
just a suing Zora. Just a regular Zora. I guess the normal ghost is that good that it's uh, able to live in the Inu tier. It's kind of crazy. Haven't bred either of those, but I guess I will have to at this point. So yeah. Sorry I couldn't show off those last ones, but those probably don't matter nearly as much as the other ones that I started off with. Like I said, I think the biggest takeaway is that weather is really going to start to dominate each tier because each one kind of has its own relegated weather. Sun is going to dominate this tier with Volcaron and Walking Wake. Rain is going to dominate this tier with, uh, you've even got the water type bull now here and Quackable, lots of water types. And then RU is going to be completely dominated by snow because you've got snow setters, you've got Aurora Veil. Um, especially now that snow boosts the defense of ice types and there's several notable ice types here I think it's gonna do quite well for itself so that's gonna be the video be sure to like comment subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one bye bye